Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back. Uh, so in the last uh, class we have seen how using uh, uh, this uh, advanced laser based diagnostics and high speed imaging uh, we can uh, find out how exactly the uh, the blow off happens. Okay? So what causes the final blow off event? And that is we found that it is essentially this uh, extinction of the flame along the shear layers uh, which is caused by increased stretch uh, 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 experienced by the flame. Uh, because it is now overlapping with the uh, Kelvin Helmholtz vortices due to reduced uh, equivalence ratio. Mm, uh, so, this uh, increased stretch is essentially causing the flame to extinguish along the shear layers and uh, once the flame extinguishes along the shear layers, this fresh mixture can pass through the shear layers uh, unbound and can come inside the recirculation zone and then due to favorable time scales there, it can ignite and it can cause chemiluminescence. So, but this was done in a very small setup, right? It's like an unconfined environment in a small uh, uh, flow rate of about 10 meters per second in a in a uh, on a on a on a, on a cylindrical uh, uh, disc type uh, flame holder. Of, co of course, none of this happens in a real engine. It's only, of course, they use a plop body. But this was a very idealized situation. So, then it was uh, decided that does this really hold in a prototypical afterburner? So this elaborate rig, this. Uh, at University of Connecticut which essentially simulates the afterburner, this part essentially simulates the afterburner of a gas turbine engine. This was constructed and this is mainly done um, uh, from uh, from projects uh, uh, from NSF and Pratt and & Whitney and uh, uh, also and it was done uh, it is mainly constructed by my uh, colleague uh, Stephen Tuttle. Okay? So, this part which is not shown here, uh, this, this previous part essentially uh, just before this is essentially cons consists of a main burner which uh, simulates the main burner of the gas turbine engine, but we are not investigating that. So, what we are doing is that we are allowing the vitiated flow from the main engine to come and uh, we are allowing it to pass through the seat exchanger which simulates this turbine okay? and then it passes to the settling section and then this is essentially a nozzle. Okay? You know, inside this is a nozzle and we are through fuel bars essentially on the on the other side we are injecting the fuel okay uh, into this into this uh, the flow into this vitiated flow okay and uh, we did unvitiated experiments also uh, and then this is our test section okay uh, and this is our test section so uh, and here we have the uh, essentially you see this is the this is a like a uh, like a uh, v type of uh, uh, this is like a, a triangular flame holder okay and you see this flame so this was very large scale experiment and uh, we have uh, very large flow rates and uh, large fuel flow rates and uh, this is of the it's exactly almost simulates one sector of this uh, um, afterburner of a f22 raptor okay and uh, so then uh, we un try to understand whether the blow off mechanism that we have discovered whether that holds in this um, new geometry because that was a cylindrical geometry, this is a rectangular geometry, new length and velocity scales, much bigger length and velocity scales, much higher than all number and we have effect of confinement and this is almost a quasi real scenario, this is almost like a, it is almost represents like the sector of a um, uh, F22 Raptor. So, does it hold here? So, this is the, the, the schematic of that rig. Uh, uh, at, uh, at University of Connecticut. So, uh, the flow comes in here, here you have essentially uh, 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 the pre burner uh, which is uh, which is uh, which burns uh, the, the which burns uh, uh, the uh, fuel and it creates the vitiated flow, uh, then it passes to the settling section which is insulated, then we have the seed exchanger um, okay. and then we uh, here we send in this uh, the PIV seeds okay. and uh, then this, this passes to this nozzle sorry this was a nozzle okay and uh, this is the settling section where we inject the fuel so this this is not the nozzle actually this was the nozzle okay and uh, uh, then we have this uh, 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 this uh, fuel injectors and uh, we have this uh, uh, the optically accessible uh, test burner or the uh, after burner and then this is this is essentially the after burner and this is the 
main burner or representing the gas turbine main combustor all right and then uh, we can have the flame and uh, study the flame law of mechanism here and the experimental setup here also that you see we have a pmt to monitor the overall em uh, emission and then we have this high speed camera with a uh, with an uh, intensifier and uh, focused into this test section and then we have this uh, uh, this test section where we have this piv laser beam going in for flow visualization where we have this and we also have this uh, plif camera uh, so that uh, we want to uh, and we have this uh, this laser uh, this spliff laser beam going in at the same place at the same time almost at the same time so and so this uh, piv and the lift camera are basically visualizing the same region and it's of course at an angle so we do have to do some image correction to uh, uh, take care of this angle uh, between these two things so how does a stable film looks like so the flow is from uh, left to right so in stable flame you see that yes uh, this is what it looks like that uh, you see that this recirculation zone the sort of bluff body is here in all these images okay this uh, flame holder is present here you see the f the flame is of course uh, is emerges from this uh, shear layers and there is no chemiluminescence from the recirculation zone okay This is the characteristic of a stable flame, no chemiluminescence from the recirculation zone. And uh, of course, when you have blow off dynamics, you see near blow off, uh, this is a blow off curve, uh, phi blow off as a function of state uh, test section velocity. And uh, you see that there is a near blow off, you have this kind of a pattern that you have this extinction reignition images. So, how does it look like as blow off happens? The flow is from left to right. Uh, from right to left um, from this to this direction you see that um, uh, again uh, let me just uh, show it uh, the flow is from uh, right to left the mean flow goes in this direction. So, this is the extinction so first we will show the extinction and uh, reignition event prior to blow off and then exactly at blow off how this flame uh, go, goes actually okay. So, you see that this ex during this extinction reignition event also this flame essentially gets confined into this recirculation zone and during the final blow off event you see that this uh, before the blow off event this contains no recirculation zone, but just prior to the blow off event you see that um, uh, this uh, uh, flame essentially gets confined into this recirculation zone and then it goes off. Okay, so, this is a very beautiful uh, sequence that uh, happens just pre preceding blow off and just by looking at the what I want to show is tail is that just by looking into the chemiluminescence images if you know the how the flow structure essentially looks like and how the flame should behave in normal situations then by understanding the deviation from this normality from this normal situations you can try to understand figure out a mechanism and then do detailed further detailed testing to basically uh, try to see whether that hypothesis from this uh, high speed imaging is true or not. So, that is what we have done. So, it seems that uh, what we have shown in the small scale setup holds in this large scale setup also. Uh, so, the f uh, just prior to extinction uh, we have this uh, extinction re re just prior to the final blow off event we have this extinction reignition uh, uh, event where the flame essentially goes into the recirculation zone, but somehow it is able to manage and uh, basically reignite and become a non like a normal flame for some extent though there is it is characterized by more unsteadiness than for a normal flame, but eventually it goes off where it, uh, the, it succumbs to too much of extinction along the shear layers and when the flame essentially re retracts into the into the into the recirculation zone and then it finally blows off. So, this is uh, what it looks like in a time series where we have the full uh, intensity you see this when we have this extinction reignition then the essentially this uh, uh, the PMT almost sees nothing which is focused downstream whereas the camera captures some signal due to the uh, this uh, extinction uh, due to the uh, emission of the res of the chemiluminescence from the recirculation zone. So, how does uh, what does the PIV PLIF say? So, once again if we do the PIV PLIF at uh, for a stable flame at uh, equivalence ratio 0.85 far from blow off we see that uh, yes once again and if you extract the flame edges we see this uh, flame edge essentially enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices flow is from right to left okay. And you have the flame holder is essentially like this um, uh, downstream of the uh, just just uh, upstream of this thing okay. So, we see that the flame is from right to left all right uh, and we see that the flame edge is essentially enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices okay. But as the extinction is approaching you see once again this kind of flame hole is forming 
okay and um, so this kind of uh, flame holes uh, are forming uh, but, but this may not be exactly flame holes because these are 2D uh, things so it can be like a uh, uh, like a flame island also but anyways um, uh, uh, this kind of flame uh, gaps in the flame uh, contour is forming and once again you see that now the flame is it has once again retracted into this uh, shear layers and now it is overlapping with the Kelvin Helmholtz vortices. So, it is possible that it is experiencing strong stretch also ok. So, we see that once again here we see that this is the if you look into only half this is the bimodal uh, OH that we are seeing but once a uh, flame um, approaches blow off it becomes an unimodal uh, OH. Uh, and it is <coughs> so uh, once um, the uh, the we have this is this is essentially the shear layer location this uh, uh, vorticities uh, okay so uh, this is essentially the shear layers this part is the shear layer so far from blow off we see that maximum OH emerges from the shear layers near blow off we see maximum OH emerges from the recirculation zone far into the shear layers ok. So, this is the most important thing. So, which means that here the flame is extinguished around the shear layers or it has essentially retracted into the uh, recirculation zone ok. Joint PDFs also say that I will not go into this and uh, if you if you obtain the stretch rates ok. So, we find that uh, uh, that once again we see that uh, this is the PDF far from blow off and this is the PDF near blow off as blow off is approached this PDF shifts towards right. So, it experiences more and more straining it experiences more stretching ok the flame experiences more stretching as blow off is approached. Once again of course, the extinction stretch rate shifts in the opposite direction. So, now you see that this full part ok is experiencing stretch rates which exceed the corresponding extinction stretch rates ok and as a result of that the flame can indeed blow off uh, in these parts and if it can essentially extinguish and when this extinction local extinction becomes too much uh, uh, then uh, the flame can go inside the recirculation zone and uh, because and the inside the recirculation zone or, or of course, it can lose heat into the flame holder and it can blow off ok. So, that is the point. So, once again we see evidence of recirculation zone burn and uh, uh, extinction around shear layers and the recirculation zone burn in these pictures also in this very beautiful uh, dramatic kind of picture. So, you see the flame is now in a very uh, corrugated shape um, formed like this. Mm, of course, these uh, edges are not detected by hand these are what obtained using uh, MATLAB CANI edge detection um, and um, uh, so this you see that there is a lot of extinction even forming also. So, here we in this uh, slide we can summarize the proposed blow off mechanism ok. So, first thing is that as blow off is approached ok. As blow off is approached of course, blow off happens when you have little bit of low equivalence ratio in this cases. So, when your equivalence ratio is 0.77. So, as blow off is approached by reducing the equivalence ratio the flame speed reduces you remember the flame speed versus phi it was a plot like this ok. So, it was kind of maximum at phi equal to 1 and here the flame speed was less. So, as phi is reduced flame speed is re reduced. So, as flame speed is re reduced from the flame like this ok it becomes a flame like this ok. So, as phi is reduced it from here to it transitions to here. So, this is the blow body ok. So, uh, as a result the flame shifts from outside towards the into the shear layer vortices ok and uh, there is partial flame extinction along the shear layers because now this flame is experiencing stretch which is exceeding the local extinction stretch rate. Why? Because when the phi was large these are the Kelvin Helmholtz vortices uh, that are formed ok. This uh, flame essentially was overlapping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices or was enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices. When phi was large the flame was enveloping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices like this, but as equivalence ratio reduces and the flame speed reduces and the flame becomes more columnar it shrinks inside and now the flame is essentially overlapping this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices ok. Now, as it overlaps the Kelvin Helmholtz vortices the flame these vortices can induce much more stretch and this stretch can cause the local flame stretch to exceed the corresponding extinction stretch rate 
and as a result there can be partial flame extinction along the shear layers. So, this part is quite clear. As blow off is approached using equivalence ratio, as reducing equivalence ratio, flame speed reduces because of this. As flame speed reduces, the flame shifts from this shape to this shape. When it is in this shape, it is essentially enveloping this Kelvin and Mohr's vortices, but as it approaches this shape, it is essentially overlapping this Kelvin and Mohr's vortices. Okay? And now, the stretch rate of the flame can exceed the extinction stretch rate of the flame and as a result, partial flame extinction can happen. Okay? Now, as soon as this flame is now gone, okay, so the flame is like this. Okay? So, the unburnt reactant, so let, let this picture be like this. Okay? So, as soon as the flame is gone like this, The unbound reactor can ent enter and train into the recirculation zone and due to favorable and flow time scales there, it can react within the recirculation zone. Hence, we observe OH and chemiluminescence from within the recirculation zone. Okay? Now, the reacting recirculation zone can reignite the shear layers. This can give heat into these things, into the shear layers which is still containing unbound reactants and as a result, the flame can again be formed. Okay? On the other hand, the other possibility is that the reacting recirculation zone can fail to reignite the shear layers. Okay? If it fails to re, uh, reignite the shear layers, then more and more parts of the shear layers become cold, absolute instability now dominates and the asymmetric mode now steps in to cause greater perturbations. So, now if it fails, okay, if it fails, what happens is that this Kelvin Helmholtz vortices become von Karman vortices and as a result of this, there is even more stronger perturbations which the flame of course cannot uh, sustain and uh, these this recirculation zone that was formed, uh, this, this reaction even the within the recirculation zone also can be disturbed and this can lead to final blow off event. That is why before blow off, people have observed this transition from convective to absolute instability or the transition from symmetric vortex shading to asymmetric vortex shading. So, this is how the whole thing is coupled. Please look into this uh, proposed blow off mechanism and it can be found in this our 2000 and play flame 10 uh, uh, paper by, uh, by uh, Chaudhary, Kostka, Renfro and Citizen. Okay. So, this is this is the paper. Now, uh, there has been significant amount of uh, work at Cambridge also uh, from uh, 2011 12 onwards where they worked with methane air flames. Now, methane air flames have Lewis number less than 1 and they also found that uh, as blow off is approached, essentially you see that this is far from blow off where we have uh, flames sitting along the shear layers, but you see that as uh, blow off is approached this uh, this shear layers again extinguish downstream and now the once again the fresh mixture can entrain from downstream of this uh, uh, recirculation zone and uh, this can uh, uh, this this fresh mixture can reignite which can cause reaction within the recirculation zone or it can fail to even reignite and uh, this cold mixture can even take away heat from the recirculation zone and this can lead to extinction also blow off in vitiated flows also are something similar uh, here also we observed that uh, that is uh, uh, that we also observed that uh, mm, uh, that uh, uh, in the stable flame of course uh, there is not much recirculation zone burn uh, but uh, in vitiated flows your temperature ratio or density ratio is much smaller so we see that this kind of an asymmetric vortex uh, shading even in the mm, uh, at uh, at uh, uh, before blow off and you see that this is once again this uh, recirculation zone burn right before blow off happens Okay, so, the, the whole thing is that blow off does not happen that the flame just lifts off from there. It happens through a period uh, sequence where essentially the flame is, is sucked into the recirculation zone before it blows off. Okay? So, uh, it is uh, like uh, and you see that uh, whereas uh, this is an unvitiated case and this is a vitiated case, you see for the vitiated case the blow off is much more abrupt in the sense that uh, it, uh, this from 8, sec 8 milliseconds within the flame can go off to the small uh, kernel within and can extinguish within this uh, period of 6 milliseconds. Whereas, in this case um, in the unvitiated case, it really uh, this is uh, takes for a long time of about 40 milliseconds by which this, uh, uh, this blow off uh, sequence happens. Okay? Because here this, um, uh, this, is, this, this is the difference between the vitiated and the unvitiated flame blow off. Uh, so, that is the point. 
So, here also we see that uh, that uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, large uh, structures uh, forming uh, in terms of the flame and the flow when blow off is um, uh, approached and you see that uh, this the kind of uh, uh, this uh, once again the flame overlapping. Uh, but uh, there is also difference as such because you see that uh, this uh, blow off is much more abrupt and uh, it does not have a long uh, period of recirculation zone burn unlike what it happens in the unvitiated case. Okay, force blow off. Now it can happen that in a in a in this afterburner which we are interested in, uh, this afterburner can have uh, uh, are often characterized by instabilities called scratch, and uh, then the flame can blow off because of the instabilities also. Uh, and here we saw that um, that um, in 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 certain cases uh, around uh, this when the length of the recirculation zone is of is about half of the wavelength of the perturbation, the the equivalence ratio, the blow off equivalence ratio can be large. Okay, so uh, this this uh, this type of this thing that when the you know, when the uh, when uh, the reason being that when the when the perturbation wavelength is of the order of recirculation zone, then in one uh, perturbation there is can be a lot of uh, cold uh, reactant entrainment into the recirculation zone. Of course, we want the reactant entrainment, but if it is it's also cold, so the if the the enthalpy content of the recirculation zone is not strong enough that it can transport it can transfer that heat to ignite that reactant so then it will essentially lose a lot of heat and uh, in energy also and it may not um, be able to ignite it so as a, as, as a result the heat loss can be more greater than the uh, heat generated and then it can lead to uh, blow off so that is what is uh, probably happening here Mm, uh, you see that um, uh, here we have uh, in the unforced blow off uh, you do not have you have essentially flame extinction along the shear layers whereas you have essentially flame uh, uh, flow coming in from the top of the recirculation zone uh, uh, and uh, causing uh, this uh, this uh, flame to uh, 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 this, uh, uh, this essentially dumping cold reactants into the recirculation zone and that is causing the uh, forced uh, blow off and this essentially we, uh, we attributed it to the force uh, vortex shedding. Um, uh, for this uh, uh, this uh, uh, for this uh, flame blow off uh, um, uh, phenomena then blow off in stall stabilized flame has uh, been studied uh, also uh, at uh, Georgia Tech and uh, uh, it was um, uh, it has also a unique uh, characteristics. I will not go too much into this and uh, um, so essentially they uh, uh, this was also studied at uh, DLR where we found that that um, here also they found that the essentially the flame uh, tip gets extinguished due to uh, this uh, due to experience of experiencing large uh, strain rates um, and uh, along the along the flame edges. So, in uh, the swirling flame blow off can be summarized by the following that uh, yes uh, the reaction occurs in the helical regions along the processing vortex, vortex core. So, you see that in a, in, a, in a flame in the swirling flames when the, when the swirl number is very large is even larger than what is required for vortex, vortex bubble breakdown then there is something called a precessing, precessing vortex core that is formed and uh, which is essentially a helical uh, region that precesses at a given frequency. And this lower root region essentially determines. So then the flame lifts up uh, off like this, and uh, this is the uh, this is the point um, uh, which is called the flame root. And uh, this lower root uh, of the flame region essentially determines the rest of the state of the flame and is inherently unstable. And uh, this uh, finding is essentially uh, that essentially the extinction uh, of that root essentially causes uh, uh, determines whether the flame will be uh, will be uh, stabilized or not uh, and likes uh, and acts like a. Mm, uh, like a pilot at that point and uh, uh, they say that uh, if the root remains extinguished for more than 2 milliseconds time scale of a PVC then no relight is possible and the flame blows up. So, it is similar to that mm, uh, uh, to our uh, finding of, uh, of this recirculation zone burn where we also found that during the extinction reignition event if the flame um, uh, if the uh, this re uh, happens for about a period of 10 milliseconds. So, uh, if uh, if this uh, uh, recirculation zone gets, uh, if this uh, recirculation zone uh, kernel cannot reignite the shear layers within a period of, hours of about 10 milliseconds, then it can cool off and it can essentially go into complete blow off. So, uh, this is the similar things where it essentially reduces to a kernel and then the kernel whether that can sustain the full flame or not depends on the situation where the kernel balances the, uh, the chemical energy, the thermal energy generated by the chemical reactions due to combustion and the 
heat loss to the uh, to the flow to by 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 thermal conduction and by thermal conduction into the metal etc uh, so that is the uh, so so far uh, that is so much for uh, this uh, discussion on the flame blow off i'll just uh, walk you over through this um, the flame blow off mechanism that we found which is essentially the uh, the similar um, to uh, uh, to the uh, to the uh, to other cases also so uh, uh, if we just recap so this was the proposed blow off mechanism okay so we found that as blow off reduces blow off equivalence ratio reduces the flame speed reduces and the flame shifts from the outside into the shear layer vortices and we have partial flame extinction along the shear layers due to because the stretch rate of the flame exceeds the corresponding extinction stretch rate by convecting vortices okay so uh, essentially from this state the flame goes into this state uh, where it now overlaps with this kelvin and moles vortices now this kelvin and moles vortices can uh, cause uh, strong stretch on the flame surface and it can exceed the extinction stretch rate and the flame can extinguish now what happens after the flame is extinguished along the shear layers? Now, as soon as the flame is extinguished along the shear layers, the non-reacting on bar mixture can enter into the recirculation zone due to favorable flow time scales and react within the recirculation zone. And uh, we can see OH and chemiluminescence from the recirculation zone, which is not possible otherwise. Okay, so uh, which is uh, recirculation zone burn is an event which is uh, which happens only prior to blow off. Okay or when the other parts of the flame has been extinguished. This is very, very important. So, it can be considered as a precursor to blow off and it can be used for designing sensors for blow off for identifying blow off also. So, the reacting research there can be two possibilities. Now, if the time scale is short, if the recirculation zone reactions are strong enough, it can reignite the shear layers to cause reignition okay? or the other possibilities then it can go into this loop again or the other possibility is that the reacting recirculation zone fails to reignite the shear layers. Okay. Now, if it fails, then the more and more parts of the shear layer become cold, absolute instability steps in because now the density ratio is approaching 1. So, now one Kerman vortex shedding can happen and the asymmetric mode can cause greater perturbation which leads to the final blow off event. Okay. So, this is the final uh, essentially the blow off mechanism for bluff body stabilized flames and similar uh, things can also happen for uh, swall flame blow off. And so, what we have shown here is that using laser based diagnostics, we can find out uh, 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 the mechanisms uh, of uh, different type of combustion phenomena that are of practical interest. So, uh, next class uh, we will look into scramjets and flame stabilization and uh, in, in scramjet uh, 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 combustors, which is even more challenging because the flow time scales will be lower, um, uh, but it is of uh, also practical importance. So, uh, till then, uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.